Okay, hi, it's time to meet the sisterhood. The sisterhood is the power of nine unique and different souls who came together through our respective journeys to wholeness. And that's a whole set of amazing stories you'll hear about another time. Each of us have created a journey to live our best life using a whole host of tools and techniques to do just that. So imagine a world where you have your own toolkit, which enables you to have your best life. What's in your toolkit, Danny? In my toolkit, I look for the gifts. In every situation, especially the really hard or painful ones, that's what I do. I want to empower myself and learn so that if I can't find the gift, I ask, what did I learn from it? And many times it's not to do it again. Gratitude and appreciation. I focus on gratitude every morning, evening, and in between. I let people know that I appreciate them. And this has made all of the difference. I practice compassion for myself and others. We're all just making our way through this world the best that we can. I reframe negative beliefs and I rewrite my own. A mistake is a learning experience. When something triggers me or ruffles my proverbial feathers, I ask, is it true? And most times it's not, and then I'll explore it. Meditation and breath work helps me to calm, center, and focus. Movement, I feel good when my body moves. And finally, writing. I do this daily, even if it's only a few sentences. It helps me to process my thoughts and feelings. I'm learning if I don't write, I don't feel right. Thank you, that's brilliant. Judy. Well, I have several tools in my toolbox and they are there for me to use um, to stay aligned with who I am and who I want to become. And that's the best version of myself. But uh, one of the important tools that's in there is um, stay healthy and fit. Um, because my body is my vehicle and it carries me throughout the day and it helps me with my um, mental clarity. And um, so I adhere to a morning ritual. Rituals are very important to me and routines as well. And uh, mine starts at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, I'm pretty disciplined that way because it prepares me for a good day to come. And it starts with a meditation and a gratitude practice. And during this time, I also set my intentions for the day. Um, and then um, it's followed by a glass of green juice. And then I'll take time to write in my journal and um, have my cup of coffee. One thing that I do do every day and I'm very religious about is to move my body. And that could be anything from a strength workout to a, to a jog or a walk or a stretch in yoga. It could be anything as long as my body moves. And um, when it comes to fueling my body, I just keep it simple. I just eat real food. And that means food that comes from nature and not a box. And, and, and that's it. I do not follow any diets or anything, but just I am very, um, um, very specific about eating whole foods. Then of course, rest and sleep, very important too. And I recognize it's such an important component that people oftentimes overlook. Um, and it doesn't always work for me, but I do try to get enough sleep. And um, for me, routines is just a powerful, um, a powerful tool. It sets myself up for constructive lifestyle and healthy habits, um, which of course leads to success. Thank you, that's lovely. Catherine. My tool books consist of my love of lifelong learning. I have a very open mindset and there is no reason why I can't learn something new every day that allows me to have more growth in my life. I also, as part of that, also really love having my deep, meaningful conversations with others because that also helps me continue to become more aware of who I am and where I am going. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. I also have the ability to have stillness in moments. I'm not always very good at meditating and I'm not always good at remembering to do my breath work, but there are times where I'm able to just literally just stop and be still. And that really helps me recharge and regenerate myself in maybe even two second increments if that's really what I need that day. And my last tool is that I write 
in all of its various forms. Um, I do five minute morning musings where I literally just sit and look out the window and write creative thoughts about whatever is going on outside of that moment. And there are other times where I'll sit and have an hour long candle lit writing session that could be journaling or it's creative writing, or it's just things that I've pulled out of books and I need to really do some more deep diving in. And all of those things help me continue to grow and be balanced. Thank you, Catherine. Carrie. I have a very prescriptive method that I follow every day. If I don't, I get a little bit away from myself, which isn't a very comfortable feeling. So this is something that I'm always sure to do. And, uh, and it just keeps me grounded and centered. I apply patience for myself and others so that I and other people have the room to grow, go with their flow, and just understand that not everything can happen in the time that we want it to happen. Movement is a very important part of my day. I have a lot of energy. And when I don't move through yoga, meditation practices, which sometimes I do moving meditation or um, hiking, spending time in nature, exercising, that energy actually manifests itself negatively if you don't move your body through its motions and, and uh, get that outside yourself. I also truly believe in evolution of self. Uh, I like to travel and um, <laughs> for those times when we can't travel, uh, something that I, I definitely believe in for myself is continual learning and that's in many facets. I just like to feel like I'm not static and, and um, traveling and continuing to upgrade yourself, whether it's learning a new language or learning something about personal development is about um, just knowing that I can always do better. Another way that really keeps me grounded is impacting others through healthful touch. That's emotionally, mentally, and physically. And uh, I also need to be very creative. I'm a designer. And so uh, this is a really important part of my existence is outputting my energy into producing a tangible item that positively affect people. Thank you. Manjushri. Namaste. So uh, my go-to must-have toolkit comprises of uh, meditation for sure, both the initiated and the guided types. Uh, I do yoga along all its four parts uh, with its eight limbs and together with meditation, it helps me broaden my connection to the universal unified consciousness. And that's how it's been ever since I've been meditating for a quarter of a century now. My next go-to tool is creative visualization, which harnesses uh, the subtle elements of my microcosm and the infinite macrocosm to activate all the subtle and earthly elements so that my goals and my life flow in harmony. Lifelong learning uh, is, uh, of course, something that I'm enthralled. I get very seduced by the process of learning and have learned to uh, ask myself, who do I wish to be now when I step into a new learning journey? And lastly, I call this as evolutionary transformation. Uh, for me, it's a mega toolkit in itself because this is the process that's the distilled essence of all my learnings and their application to transform into a higher state of evolution, to be in the orbit of benevolent laws of existence so that I may live as a graceful and a joyous being and that is my endeavor. So when it's time to share my toolkit, I hope that they act as divine talisman and magic lamps of fulfillment, just like they do for me. That's cool. Thank you, Sri. Thank you. Maria. Almost missed the mute button. My go-to mantra that I realized that my father's passing was honor the past, prize the present, and respect, respect the future. And much of my self evolution has sprung from that lesson. 
and just witnessing my father, who was someone who was very kind to his future self. He had ambitions, true, but he felt that one lives consequence and, and consequently. And as a result, for me, self-inquiry has become an incredibly important tool in my tool set because it is not about the question of what you want. It is a question as to what your body is telling you and what the universe is saying in alchemical response to the experience that you as a human being are having in this life on this planet. And self-inquiry has been an enormous um, boost to my sureness of the intuition that comes to me in the process of experiencing and living life. And it started with journaling. It expanded to include creative visualiz visualization like Manjusri um, offered. It expanded even further into a celebration of the ordinary. So things like housekeeping and housekeeping as well as um, just enjoying basic chores, taking my car for a service. I bless those moments and I engage with them at the level of meditation and mantra uh, because I realized until I hit this point of consciousness, I'd been cursing a lot of those moments as something that wouldn't allow me freedom and liberation, that I had to get things done before I could enjoy my life. So that, those are my tools my key tools in my toolbox, self-inquiry, and certainly blessing every moment and every chore, everything happens with ease. That's gorgeous, thank you, Maria. Smadal. Need to unmute yourself, Smadal. Sorry. That's okay. So my toolkit includes, first of all, a basic belief in the good of the existence and that everything happens for the better. Two main things that works for me. One, the first is body attention. I use my body as a tool to free my spirit. I was a practitioner of the Greenberg Method and there I have my basis for this practice, internal work. Everything we experience in life, both good and bad, we experience through our bodies. So I pay attention to how I feel. And when I feel, and mainly like go with the flow, but when I feel stuck or when difficulty or barrier arises, I locate it in my physical body with my attention. And then use my body attention, body work, or things like Ho'oponopono around that area to release it and to dissolve it. This might seem like meditation or working in motion. And when the body releases, so is the spirit. And the second tool is something that I learned on the life book. And it's uh, like creating my life vision in a very pragmatic and uh, practic way. And um, yeah, I do read it every day just to put myself in the right context. And um, I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Yvette. Hiya. Um, in my toolkit, it comprises of deep shadow work. And what that basically means is, is that um, I try to look at all the different aspects of my life to bring equilibrium into them. Um, I use um, uh, NLP technique. I use Reiki and integrated energy therapies to help me do that. Um, I use silence as a very powerful tool. Um, like Judy, I arise very early in the morning and I give myself the gift the first three hours so I meditate, I journal, um, I write um, about the day to come and my envisioning of what I want. And I'm hugely into your life vision and your life purpose and living that on a daily basis. So again, I'm a lifelong learner. Um, and I also like movement and healthy food. So those pillars, if I stick to them, um, really help me um, in my daily practices. But it's throughout the day practicing the other tools, such as going with the flow, boundaries, self-love, acceptance, respect, 
um, on a continuous basis throughout the day in the toolkit are what keeps me sane. Thank you. So that just leaves me. Uh, in mine, my toolkit started out with emotions and creating emotional recipe cards. And I created one for every emotion that I could, uh, that I'd experienced in my life and that I could imagine maybe coming back through my life uh, in the future. And each recipe card has tools and techniques that I can use to, to manage those effectively. Uh, and that was significant for me. And then moving on to meditation, and I do use guided meditation most of the time. I occasionally use unguided, but my guided one, the, the, the keys to that was forgiveness, gratitude, and looking at my lifelong vision and just focusing forward on what the future is bringing to me now and trying to live in the future, not living in the past. Um, and then the other piece of that is envisioning your day. And that becomes my first go-to every morning so that I can, I can create the day that I want to come, not create the day that, or have the day that's going to come at me. Um, and that was incredibly powerful. Clearing and reframing my limiting beliefs and, and managing my beliefs and, and, and how and what they do for me. And that was really powerful. But more, more importantly was creating and defining rules and boundaries for my life what were my rules what were my boundaries not the ones i'd inherited from my past and and that became really freeing for me going forward and the last two uh, for now and i've got many many more but the last two that i particularly want to talk about is intuition and using my gut now and trusting myself um and that actually i do know all the answers and and i can use them wisely um, and lastly my energy uh, energy flows and we are all powerful energy and we're in a universe that's benevolent and wonderful and beautiful and we are connected and the more connected you allow yourself to be the more the universe will bring back for you so that's in my toolkit so over time we will create and share these and many tools with all of you so that you can create your best life because that's what we're living as a collective power of nine um an amazing group of people that have come together and i'd like to thank you all for contributing and sharing um, and we hope that everybody watching this will hear and listen to our gifts thank you <laughs>